show the whole world. Hi guys, so welcome. Today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how I knitted this ski hood, also known as a bakalava. Bakalava? Bakalava almost sounds like baklava, but it isn't. So first I wanna address that this is like my first time ever knitting. So I've made a lot of mistakes, of course, but that is the reason why I'm making this video. So if anyone is doing this ski hood or baklava, I'm not even going to pronounce that again, but if anyone's going to do the ski hood, this video is just going to show you guys not to make the mistakes I've made. I've corrected all the mistakes and I think I'm at a place where I like how it turned out. There's still a lot of improvements that need to be made, but overall, the mistakes that I've corrected, I'll showcase here so you guys don't make the same mistake as I have. So yeah, so let's just dive into it. So the blog post I used to get the pattern is called All the Peaches Please, and she generously just handed out free pattern for the ski hood. I'll have her blog post down below so you guys can also follow along. So right below I have my laptop and I have the instruction down so I can look at the instructions and let you know what part I understood, what part I didn't understand, how you can go on with it and all that stuff. So first thing, the equipment you'll need. So that's the knitting needle, that's the yarn, And lastly, a sewing needle. You can find them from affordable places, from online or even pound store. So you can pretty much make this whole piece under five pounds. So the knitting process, I'm going to be sticking with the simple knitting style rather than doing what's said in a blog where she did a rib kind of pattern which I'll show a picture of what a rib is and what I'm doing and then there's also a pearl which is like another beginner friendly kind of knitting style so I'm just going to be sticking with the knitting one I think it's just called a knit pattern I'll probably correct myself while I'm editing, but that's what I recall. So the start of the knitting process, I'll have it down below a video that I watched that helped me, I guess, start this whole process. And that's the looping part. So you first start with the loop, so you loop it around your needle. She said that she did around 50, but I did 60 just because I knew when I do things new, I get a bit anxious or excited, either one of them. I tense up, so my grips are gonna be tighter and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be knitting tightly. So I wanna loosen it up, so I added an extra 10, so that's 60 loops. So she said to do 12 rows. So this going up and down is one row. So when you hit 12 rows, it's time to decrease. So again, I have a link down below. Decreasing for me was a little bit tough and I did mess up while I was decreasing, but it's really easy to correct your mistakes once you notice it, so don't worry about it. And to be honest with you, the blog wasn't clear or probably because I was just ignorant with the knitting language, but really it could be both. It could be me really. But here came my first big mistake and that was decreasing it twice. So I'm already at a process of knitting a bookmark, which is yes I know so cute <laughs> so anyway so a decrease is literally these two loops as one and then you knit this one you knit this one you knit this one and then you treat these two as one and knit it together so that is what a decrease so that is one row decrease and then by the time it will be on this um needle what I do is I like to flip it over like that so can you imagine this whole lot of yarn is on this other needle and then I do the same rotating it but when I rotate it I then do it again where I decrease it from the start and the end and I've done that twice which gave me this result 
which is a steep decrease which isn't enough to cover my back head but like I said I'm new to this so I kind of felt like I did something wrong but I was like you know what I rather continue doing it and then realize like when I'm finished that yes I completely messed up I wasn't in no rush I didn't have a deadline technically I did I wanted to complete it within a week but if I didn't I, it wasn't the end of the world so I was like you know what let me just continue doing it because I rather be 100% wrong than be like this doesn't feel good this doesn't look good so I'm just gonna correct it but then next thing you know I was actually doing good I just added more time to myself like that already like frustrates me so much so I was like be 100% wrong or I don't even know if that's a good guidance to follow to be honest with you but that's what I did and it wasn't too bad like I didn't suffer too much <laughs> so anyway correction there is decrease one side so you're collecting it into this needle and you flip it over you do normal you do normal in this side so you don't decrease it again so you decrease one row then the other row you don't decrease you decrease another row the other row you don't decrease you decrease the other row the other row you don't decrease You get the gist so that is a total of 20 rows and with the knitting language i don't even know if this is a knitting language but she said 15 rows is just right and the first and left loop is set still what does set still supposed to mean i did my research i couldn't find it i don't know if that's just her way of saying like something you know like i don't know so i just kind of backed away from that so i'll show you the difference between how i did double decrease and normal decrease like you can see how steep the decrease is and how not so steep the other decrease is so now you knit normal as in like no decreasing just normal one loop knitting for 10 rows so that's a total of 31 rows and then now you get into another challenge which is the increase in part I struggled with this again that is seven more rows of increased knitting and if you notice the edge isn't looking cute redo it because I guess you kind of want to be proud of yourself even if it is going to be your first ever knitting project you still want to at least be somewhat putting a little hard work into it meaning if it isn't going well redoing it again and you know put in as much hour into it as you can so so far you should have around 38 even if you're even if you have 39 that's okay don't worry just continue and with the increasing and decreasing same formula in terms of increase one side and then don't increase the other row increase another row and don't increase the other row so when you've completed with that seven rows of increasing you do the last rows which is five rows of just normal knitting so literally you're almost there so that is a total total of 43 rows and then now you're at the point where you're finishing off your knitting piece again I'll link down below so another huge mistake is I got carried away I was watching my good old I don't know what I was watching then but anyways so I was just watching a lot of videos and I got carried away and I did a lot more knitting than I was supposed to stress is not needed you can easily undo it and do it again I don't know about you but knitting it's so therapeutic so there's a lot of making mistakes trying it on loosely seeing how ridiculous I look going back to my station and just removing fixing correcting yada yada so when you're finished off finishing off the last row it should come out looking something like this and now we're literally at the last step which is when this large sewing needle gets involved but i would highly recommend you guys to get like a smaller one i feel like it would be a lot more easier to sew up your product you will sew from the top part and from the next so at this time where i was sewing these pieces together i was exhausted and i was not feeling it but i knew that i wanted to get this project done and over with so i literally just did my general clothes fixing sewing kind of style but there is a specific way that will get you um i guess somewhat a more secure side which i'll have a link down below but just 
watching that i don't know i was just so not bothered i was like i'm just gonna sew it the normal way that i always did with other type of garments and pieces and stuff and so far it's been intact so i don't really have any issue but apart from the neck part the top part is a little loose so i guess that's the disadvantage of just doing whatever you want to do but sometimes if you're okay with it you're okay with it and it's something that probably in the future you get back onto so now i'm gonna show you the results So this is how it looks like, it's so cute, it almost looks like a biker helmet. As you can see there's some thread coming out, you can just easily tuck it into the pattern. Just like, tuck it in. Do you see how it's like that? And then there you go, so now it's like, it's not coming out. So that's what you can do rather than trying to, you know, snip it off and just have extra waste material out and about you know so now i'm gonna put it on even though i'm wearing makeup i'm gonna try to avoid <sighs> ah. oh my gosh how cute as you can see there's a little issue and that is this part so i guess something went wrong here i feel like this is something that could easily be corrected i was finishing it off it got somewhat bulky apart from this little issue i feel like it's a success you know and it's so cozy like i swear to you it's so cozy i love it and also i probably could do with more on the neck i guess i got a long neck because i'm also wearing my headscarf under it and it's somewhat really quite bulky i also tied my hair so that also adds up to the bulkiness it might look a little weird but you get it you know you get how it would turn out so that is the finished look i hope you enjoy this video and if you did please do give a like and if you want to see more video from this channel please do subscribe i'm really happy with this look to be honest with you it's funny because it's literally gonna snow next week and we're in the middle of spring it's actually british summer now which is funny because it's like going to snow within a week so i might pop this out when it's gonna snow you know and that's a goodbye for now